Can everybody hear me? Is, pardon? Yeah, I want to know if you can hear me. You don't have to stand very close to that microphone. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, it picks you up. It picks me up. It's going to well. pick me up. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, right. Well.
Good morning and welcome to you all to St. Lawrence this morning. We have, we have the uh, Guy Ellsmore. Which area are you from? Is it Northampton? Um, I'm uh, so Archdeacon of Buckinghamshire. Ah, Archdeacon of Buckingham. Got that one wrong. <laughs> anyway, welcome to you this morning. Um, I am not aware of any other notices, but hands are popping up. Beryl. Um, can I just say that if any of you want to keep up with um, Paul Rushton's news, could you see me afterwards and I can email you his news. I've got several emails and various things. Okay. Thank you. Leslie, did you pop your hand up for a notice? No. Okay. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be with you again. I think I was last with you for um, a special anniversary last year. Um, as is traditional when I come to visit you, um, I've parked miles away my sat-nav. This is the only place my sat-nav ever lets me down. And it drops me at a different point around the churchyard uh, each time. And Alan is there waiting with a space ready for me. And I approach him from a different angle uh, each time. Um, who knows? Well, you'll have to give me another chance to, uh, to come and try to get it right. Um, let's keep Paul in our prayers today. He goes for um, a minor op uh, today, uh, but continuing to um, otherwise re recover well. But we join our prayers with him and Jeanette as we worship today. Um, we have some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between uh, Enoch Sarre of the parish of Woolmerton Mill and Charlotte Rose Kathleen Slater, also of the parish of Woolmerton Mill. But each um, having a qualified connection to this parish. If anyone knows of any reason in law why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, they should declare it now. This is for the second time of asking. And let's pray for Enoch and for Charlotte. Heavenly Father, we pray for this couple and for all couples preparing for marriage. Pray for your blessing on their love and on their life together. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> So, begin with the formal greeting from the Order of Service, words of St. Paul used at the beginning of many of his letters. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And we stand to sing our opening hymn. is Mothering Sunday and this Sunday is a pause in the middle of Lent to give thanks for those who have given us life. We give thanks for the Church, our spiritual mother, nourishing us in faith and sending us out to live as God's people in the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are steadfast in love, and infinite in your mercy. You we welcome sinners and invite them to be your guests. We confess our sins, trusting in you to forgive us. We have yielded to temptation and sinned. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
we have turned from our neighbour in their need. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have resisted your word in our hearts. Lord have mercy. The Almighty and most merciful God, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. Time for true repentance and amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the special prayer for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself, Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and heal, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> We're seated for our first reading from the book of Exodus. <coughs> The Old Testament reading is on page 56 of the Pew Bibles. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him for no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> we stand to sing again, number 111, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
remain standing for the Gospel reading. Gospel reading is on page 971 of the Pew Bibles. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Spirit of love. Amen. Amen. As I walked with our two teenage children through the remains of the um, flower displays in Tesco, yesterday afternoon, I kept having to correct them. It's not Mother's Day, it's Mothering Sunday, I found myself saying. I'm pretty sure somebody said it to me when I was younger as well. Um, we may as well give up though, because um, even Radio 4 on the way in, it was Mother's Day this and Mother's Day that. It's not Mother, Mother's Day, it's Mothering Sunday, I wanted to say to the radio. Well, of course, it's the transatlantic name, though I think the American day actually falls elsewhere in the year, doesn't it? Um, but somehow it's stuck because Mother's Day is there in so many American sitcoms and what have you. Um, and of course, there is the squeamishness of um, the commercial world um, and, you know, any hint of religious connotations, God forbid. Uh, so Mother's Day um, versus Mothering Sunday continues, even if it's futile. I'm going to try and hold on to Mothering Sunday. And of course, there is plenty of overlap, like the American idea of Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday, is there to help us to remember and to celebrate our mothers. But I think the lectionary's insistence on Mothering Sunday is a helpful one. Because, of course, for some, this may be a day of huge thanksgiving and, you know, a family celebration and all the rest of it. But we also know that for others, this may not be completely a day of celebration and may be a day of regret or sadness. Some may be going later to place flowers on a grave. Some may have an unfulfilled prayer to be a mother themselves. For some, there may be estrangement with a mother living or departed. I found myself back in Sutton Coldfield on Friday, and I took my mum and dad out for lunch. Mum is back at home after a long spell in hospital and then a care home. Friday is the first time I've ever pushed her in a wheelchair. And as we went across the Litchfield Road, I found myself remembering 
uh, just a very early memory when she pushed my push chair the other way across the Litchfield Road to the shoe shop to buy my first pair of shoes, or first pair of walking shoes, I should say. Um, a really profound moment. And many of you will have had that experience of the exchange of being moving from being cared for by mum to being carer of mum. And it's a profound and moving thing, both sad in its way and happy and right in its way as well. And so lots of us will have mixed emotions around Mothering Sunday. And that's where I think Mother's Day gets in the way, because the Rasmataz has no nuance to it. Tesco was round to the gunnels with people buying last minute cards and flowers and gifts, and not a few um, boys and men and daughters wondering which end of a chicken is which, and uh, probably the incidences of food poisoning go up, um, you know, uh, on, on this afternoon. Um, there was a great archway of pink balloons over the entrance to um, the much reduced flower display in Tesco. And so all of that razzmatazz kind of sets a tone. Images of motherhood um, which in the shop displays are images of ideals, of motherly perfection. And while we know that those images are true at times, they're also less than true at times. For most people, most of the time, the picture will be mixed. Our reading from Exodus puts us right. It's the familiar story of the baby in the bulrushes. What we're seeing in the familiar story is not saccharine, sweet motherhood, but the story of two women. A woman who knew that her son should die, and whose only option was literally to put him in a basket on the river to see what happened, to see what fate brought. So a motherhood of desperation, a sadness and a desperate choice. And another woman, the Pharaoh's daughter, we're not told much about her, but her life circumstances were such that she was only too glad to embrace and take a child as her own. A desperate longing to be a mother, unfulfilled by whatever the circumstances of her life or her biology were. Two women joined together in tragedy but also joined together suddenly in God's plan. The Gospel reading is even less like the Mother's Day cliches. Mary and Joseph come with an offering of two turtle doves to the temple, the offering made by the poorer families coming to give thanks for a child and for the purification. And Simeon, the elderly prophet, alongside Anna, the prophetess, suddenly descend upon the child. And Mary's motherhood is both blessed, and we recall the words of Mary's joy in the Magnificat. 
my soul has magnified the Lord. And yet with that blessing, almost like the, you know, um, I'm thinking about um, those Disney films where at the moment of the child's birth, there's also um, a more difficult word spoken. And Simeon says to Mary, this child is destined for the rising and falling of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. I looked around Tesco, and I can tell you that nowhere in the card display for Mother's Day is the motto, and a sword will pierce your own soul. <laughs> Mother and Sunday is much more real than Mother's Day. Um, as the father of a child who died in his 20s, I know the pain of motherhood and fatherhood can be profound at times of family tragedy. The sword will pierce your own soul too. For some, that is the reality of Mothering Sunday and of family life at times. And yet, all of this is on a Sunday in Lent. Lent, that season which holds together the pain of the world, which ultimately takes us to the pain of the cross and the joy of God's salvation. The promise that in Jesus and in his cross and resurrection, even this, the most difficult of pains, will be healed and all will be made new. Mother in Sunday then, a day of thanksgiving for our mothers, a day of mixed emotions, but also a day to remember the mothering love of God, those everlasting arms which hold us through all things. Shall we stand and together affirm our faith in God? <laughs> seated now for our prayers of intercession. In the following prayers I'll end with Lord in our mercy and this prompt to be here. Everlasting God, our creator and redeemer, you love us and us better than we know ourselves. With the word you created all things, and so we pray that she will hear the word of your children as we pray. We thanks to you for your church, the world, and its people. Let us pray. On 4th of March, the RNLI celebrated 200 years since its foundation. 
Since then, it has saved thousands of lives and continued to provide support and rescue around our coastline. We thank for the vision of Sir William Hillary in creating a service dedicated to saving lives at sea. We give thanks that his work continues to this day. For all those who give their time and volunteer for our lifeboats, we give thanks for their skill and commitment, for their safety at sea, for their families and friends who watch and wait for their return. For all, for all those today who find themselves a pair on the sea, for their rescue, safety and care in their difficulty. As Jesus calmed the storm, we pray for safe passage for all on the sea. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we see the brokenness of the world, we pray for healing among the nations. For food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, for peace among all your children. We pray that leaders are committed to creating a society of justice and peace, and together we can create and protect a better world. We think of our brothers and sisters across the world who face turmoil and conflict, at women's grief of burying husbands and brothers and sons, and we pray especially for your resolution in Israel and Palestine. We pray that the persecution of innocent people is brought to an end by peaceful negotiations towards a ceasefire. Just as a mother watches her children, you see the damage we do in your world. May your love strengthen us so that we can work to change ourselves and the world. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. <laughs> this Sunday falls just after International Women's Day on Friday, which calls for a world free of bias, stereotypes and discrimination. We pray for communities gathered throughout the world today, for church leaders, for all women, men and children, who seek to know God's will and to do it. Let us make your churches safe and nurturing places where everyone can find their true home, where the lonely, the excluded and the rejected may be welcomed, and where everyone can experience your unconditional love. Lord, in your mercy, in your love. This morning we pray especially for mothers and stepmothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and all those women who have loved and laughed, wept and worked to care for others. Let us be a source of encouragement, support, and friendship for them as they courageously accept this as far as responsibility. Bless all parents and all carers and strengthen families living under stress. We think also of those children in our society who are neglected and abused by the very people who should be protecting them. We pray for the family lives of the nation upon which so much depends. We know good experience of family life leads to good family life in the next generation. May our homes be places of love, patience and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> we recognise that for some this is a peaceful day painful day, entwined with loss and bereavement, not only due to childlessness, but also for lost children through early death, stillbirth, miscarriage or termination. Remember those who want to be mothers but are unable, or those who still wonder about a child place for adoption. We pray that your spirit will nurture, comfort, heal and bless, bringing your wholeness to all who need it. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. We pray for the very old, those living with serious illness, and for those who love them and struggle as they witness their loved ones diminishing health and daily challenges. We pray for those struggling with mental health, that they can see life as a journey, and that you carry them when they fall. We pray for those lost in the addiction to drugs and alcohol. We bring before you all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, knowing that in whatever dark times of suffering, anxiety or confusion, you are there. Loving God, we ask that you, that all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, whether recent or in the past, they will find comfort, comfort as you hold them in their sorrow. As we remember loved ones who have gone before us, grant that we may one day share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In your we now 
now take a moment to pray for those who are named on our weekly notice sheet. And we particularly pray for Paul today who has had his operation. But also give thanks that we are blessed to have the NHS in this country that can cure so and the, and the talent of the, and willingness of the people working in the NHS to put themselves there to help our lives to improve. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood, which was shared on the cross. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> table is prepared for communion and as the collection is taken our hymn is number 135 speak O Lord 135 speak O Lord you've got a quite a, that's quite a hymn book you've got 1315 speak O Lord as we come to you Thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessing and praise belong to you, gracious and eternal God. Through your living word you created all things. The majesty of the heavens and the glory of the earth. In the wisdom of your goodness you have made all people in your image and likeness. Therefore, with saints and angels, and with all creation, we lift up our voice to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise that in the fullness of time you gave your only Son to share our human nature and to be tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. To set his face resolutely toward Jerusalem and to be lifted high upon the cross that he might draw all creation to himself. When the hour of his glory came, and loving his own to the end, he sat down with them at supper and took bread. And after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Dying, you destroy our death. Rising, you restore our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In obedience to his command, we recall his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and we look for his coming in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. In union with Christ's offering for us, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice. Unite us in love and peace with all your people, until, with the whole company of heaven, we are brought into the presence of your eternal glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one and glory of the Almighty God. say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For we give them the power and the glory of the Lord. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ is the true life. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, and bless the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your mind of all the great mercies. We are not worthy as much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so that we can bless your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that we may have a more way of him, and he is Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to declare that you are righteous, but that you desire to be true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in your frailty and sin you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy. Amen.
Gracious God, we thank you that you have nourished us with the bread of life and with the cup of salvation. May we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We give us some your praises for living in your glory, and we who have known the greatness of your love, see you face to face in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Him, if I could get the number right this time, 152 <laughs> yes. for the beauty of the earth. <laughs> Love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. 